Shout out to uh, SG, actually, for pausing. Pretty sure my revenge was done the same. But anyway, yeah, both um, yeah so should be good. I, I think we're good to go. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's actually going to be uh, State Green. They're on the Legion side. we got my revenge on the Hellborn side. I think we're ready. Game number one, State Green versus my revenge. <laughs> All right. So as you can see, we are in the game. Okay, we are good. Good luck. Have fun, guys. Thanks. There you go. Letting them know that we are appreciative of them uh, complying with asking for the pause. Okay, so stay green versus my revenge. Of course, the my revenge. Uh, well, going over both rosters real quickly. Sure. Yeah, of course, Swindle Melon, Sender, Slicks, Kazu, and Z Freak. Ah. And I say Sender like that because uh, you know we, there was actually rumors when Slicks was picked up that maybe Sender was going to be uh, the one to kind of become a sixth man. But uh, I yeah. guess obviously with him being here, uh, Skyzo is. I don't know if he's just not here or if they're sure. using Sender because of that. But um, Sender is playing in place of uh, Skyzo for this match at least. So yeah. how about my revenge though? My Revenge, we got Stroyfutter as their drafter, Archie Tiger, Fuzi, Znawi, and Ziba. So, a uh, very strong lineup right there. Right now, we're going to have to kind of jumpstart things and look as fast <laughs> as we can as far as heroes and player assignments go, as, as hopefully we don't miss anything. But we have Tempest being played by Swindlemelon, Sender playing that Andromeda, Slicks playing that Silhouette, Keizu playing that Tundra, and Z Freak uh, manages, manages to get that Ophelia there. Yeah. And for yeah. my revenge, we got Stroyfutter playing Pharaoh, Archie Tiger playing your Glacius, Fuzi on that Maraxis, that hard initiator. Znawi playing a Luna, so they have two different supports actually. And then Ziba playing a Cthulhuphon actually. Mm. Is this, uh, maybe we are casting Domaino panels. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ziba uh, playing that Cthulhuphon. Really looking forward to seeing you know what he brings to the table. Of course, I bring that up kind of jokingly, but Emperor, he's known for picking Cthulhuphon all the time nowadays still. Um, and he plays him more as an aggressive roamer slash jungler. And it seems like, actually, Exhibit uh, here, he's kind of going for that. In fact, going up against Ophelia, the great thing about having a Cthulhu fun against Ophelia is the fact that he can use that hook him against her creeps, actually. And it could be really annoying. So they have both Cthulhu fun and Glacius. And actually, uh, I guess it is more of a tri lane setup now that I look at it. Uh, yeah. He's uh, back in the lane, and Glacius and Luna playing that support role, as you mentioned earlier on. So uh, some very interesting things going on here for my revenge, actually. Yeah, I think it was meant to be a tri lane in the beginning. Cthulhu fun wanted to go over and kind of screw Ophelia or by getting a creep, but Z Freak smartly, and you should do this when you're up against like a Parasite or a Cthulhu font, but bought Boots first. That's the only time you want to buy Boots first on Ophelia, huh. and it's so that you can kite um, Cthulhu font or Parasite from getting your creep. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did. And actually, Cthulhu font was forced to take one of the um, the smaller Minotaurs there instead of the one that Z Freak had already controlled. Yeah. So well played by Z Freak right there. And uh, speaking of interesting uh, pickups, I mean, Sender on Andromeda, not, not a hero uh, that we see too often nowadays on the competitive scene, but as I always like to go back to, I think when you talk about support heroes, especially that skill very well into the late game, I mean, we bring up Engineer a lot lately for his popularity, but I think Andromeda is definitely up there I do as too. far as support goes too, so yeah. um, of course, that's going to be very good, especially having a silhouette teammate. Very powerful combo there. I love Andromeda. I think she's amazing. She doesn't lane exactly the greatest, but in most situations where teams do not man up like this in the long lane, it's it's free levels and a support that otherwise wouldn't have gotten them in in a situation like this. And then once you actually make it to the late game, she is arguably one of the best the best <laughs> the best supports in the late game because her skills is um her abilities to skill so well and having that yeah. swap also as like a get out of jail free card for your carry or who, what have you, it's just a great tool to have once you approach that mid to late game. Yeah. Uh, so, we'll see how uh, Sender does. Of course, Sender is a, definitely a solid support player here on the competitive scene. He's been around forever. Uh, he's had a lot of success, uh, definitely quite a bit of achievements, and you know, a very sound support player, d definitely. So, uh, we'll see what he brings to the table here for, of course, Stay Green. For those that might be a little bit confused, yes, Stay Green. Uh, that's officially their name change now going to cycle number two. Uh, formerly known as Vote, a.k.a. Gary Johnson 2012. Tundra in the meantime in the middle, and a lot of pressure coming out. Actually, the minions even helping a little bit, or the, uh, the creep wave there. But in the end... Uh, Who's that playing Tundra? Uh, Keizu. Actually, yeah, Keizu playing Tundra. So this actually brings up an interesting point once again about yeah. Stay Green. I mean, you look at you look at Slicks again. He was recently picked up by them going into cycle one. and a lot of talk about that. But it seemed like they were still adamant on keeping Keizu as the carry player. That seems like it may have changed a little bit lately. Maybe they've now got Slicks as a carry, but hold that thought for a second. Glacius did a lot of trouble running into a field right there. Froze the minion, but of course you could still use the net through the freeze. And Slicks eventually gets the Bloodlust kill. On Silhouette, that worked out great for Stay Green right there. Yeah, that, that is not what you want to have if you're My Revenge. I mean, you have the great tools against Ophelia. You're tri in the long lane, which means you need to man up. But look at actually even some more aggression coming onto Cthulhu Font, who doesn't have a shield. He's actually going Ooh. man mode. It goes back into Andromeda. 
falls to the walls, basically. And they actually do pursue Andromeda. One more auto attack. He does go down center. Will fall. And actually, oh wow, Luna's yeah. taking a lot of damage and he will fall to Slicks now. So one for one trade. This is not what you want if you're my revenge. Well, Exhibit actually uh, nearly died himself. That almost was a double tap for Slicks. So the fact that it was only a one for one is actually the good news. I was, I mean, of course, I love the man mode, man, but that's that seemed very, very manish, <laughs> a little, a little too manish, even. I don't know. Anyways, uh, you know, kind of diving in right there. It was just to get a kill on Andromeda. I mean, sure they got it, but in a sense, you also did sacrifice your your Luna for the kill for Silhouette. So, yeah, probably not worth it right there. And right now, Slicks, he's having a horrible creep farm, by the way. I mean, he only has six creep kills. You look at it that way, but. He has two hero kills, including the Bloodlust kill, of course. Mm -hmm. And as a result, he's around 260 gold per minute. So what should be a pretty solid lane here for my revenge at the bottom is actually not working out too bad for Stay Green for the Silhouette here. Well, simply because of the kills. Like, yeah. if you look at CS, they're definitely winning. Silhouette's getting close to nothing. Actually has six um, creep kills under her belt, but really not that much. Petula Font could have more if they didn't have these exchange, these crazy exchanges happening. Mm -hmm. It's sitting at around 19 CS. Actually missed that one right there. Top lane, let's look at this this actually, because this is a new skin. I actually like how it looks. This is yeah. Nubis Pharaoh. <laughs> so going to come up against the suicide, um, the suicide Tempest here. Pharaoh is 20 and 10. Tempest is actually 18 and 11. So this is one of the matchups I feel like Tempest is not that bad against because when you do some of those minions and if they do split, if uh, Pharaohs, when, they, when they're when they solo, they like to go that max Hellfire build, and he's kind of doing the same thing here. Mm -hmm. It's just not nearly as effective once you're up against a, t a lot of creeps. Yeah. And so this is one of the matchups that a Suicide um, Tempest can actually do well in. Yeah, you know, speaking of Pharaoh, uh, that skin is definitely pretty awesome. <laughs> you mentioned that. Uh, it's pretty badass. But I'm looking more at this Hellborn team. Again, we kind of joined it a little bit late, uh, planning to cover another series. Yeah. But as a result of it not happening, apparently, uh, we're going to this one. But anyways... This is a very beefy team over here, man. I mean, of course, you got yeah. Glacius and Aluna, but then you have Moraxis, Cthulhu, Fa and Pharaoh. <laughs> I mean, three strength heals right there that bring a lot of tanky presence. So it's kind of a unique lineup in that sense coming out for My Revenge. They don't really have that hard carry choice. I mean, Aluna, but obviously she's running the hard support, so not really. Uh, a great line stun right there, but he's in a lot of trouble. Oh, being uh, kind of stunned himself and actually will fall. Was he frozen? I think he got frozen by Glacius, actually. I was wondering what the hell that was. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got frozen by Glacius. I, I want to say that would have been on accident. Now, we never really see this, but of course there is a positive that can be positive where it reduces the damage taken, but that seemed kind of silly to help with the uh, the stun right there. That might have been a misclick. Maybe he had that idea. I don't know. But in the end, Cthulhu Font dies, and it works out pretty well for State Green once again. Turn to the middle lane, a little bit of pressure. Actually, Matrix going to be used, but the haste rune activator from Keizu. Not really sure what Fuzi was thinking right there. He should have really spotted that at the very least that there was a haste rune. Yeah. And uh, Keizu in fine. In fact, Keizu may try to turn this around. Piercing Shard's coming out. Ophelia running in with a Cyclone, but it's not going <laughs> to be close enough. <laughs> Good attempt, Z-Freak, but I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, not even close, but uh, funny idea. Yeah, he should have known that. At least he got him to pop a haste rune, I suppose. But hey, you used your ultimate, so that was yeah. a good exchange for Moraxis, who is having a much better creep farm, actually. In, oh, sorry, I was comparing him to blue. So no, it's, the creep farm is actually quite even here in mid. Slight advantage there to Moraxis. But yeah, this bottom lane, when you man up like this, you cannot be the one to be aggressed on. Like, you, yeah. you need to be getting the kills. And as a result, all, also, not not only just the fact that they're losing this lane, but because they are running basically a tri lane against a dual lane with Ophelia in the jungle, mm -hmm. is they're losing out in experience. Uh, Silhouette's level 5, Alcatula Font is level 4, the other supports are, or Luna's level 3, uh, Andromeda's level 3, of course, but, you know, it, you're running a tri lane, so. Well, the, the thing that's really standing out to me as far as stats go at this bottom lane is you look at Slicks on Silhouette, he's only farming 230 gold per minute, right? but he's 2-0-1. It really goes to show you, you know, ideally for my revenge, if this lane was working as it should have been, where at the very least he wasn't getting any kills, he would be getting absolutely nothing. Right. But because this creep farm, again, it only has 11 creep kills. He actually has 14 denies. <laughs> He's been denying quite a bit, but only 11 out of 12 creep kills, a couple more. But that's that's minimal, man. That's absolutely nothing. Now, hold on. I thought Aluna actually getting caught here in the jungle. Z Freak chasing him down. Going to try to block him with a Minotaur. Might not be successful. I think it's going to be just out of range. Good stun from Aluna right there. Actually going to pick up the invisibility rune. And ooh, the Andromeda Aurora will not cancel it, though. Will be fine. Meanwhile, Andromeda actually helping or trying to save Ophelia, but Ophelia gets turned on as good through the vault. And Glacius come down, and actually Aluna coming back to the table. Doesn't have mana, though, so not much that she can do. And actually, Z Freak from death going to control the Minotaur still. And Slicks right there will pick up the kill. Great trample lines done, but at what cost right here? Avalanche comes out and cut through the fault. Will fall. Pharaoh, will he dive in? Yes, he will, but he hit the Minotaur. 
Matrix activated. Feral wants to make something happen, as does Moraxis. Andromeda will go down. Matrix going to deactivate right there, and down goes Moraxis. Hatcher coming out for Slicks. Are you kidding me right now? Slicks has 306 gold per minute, and he's sitting on thir 13 creep kills. That is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, we do see Tundra actually make it turn off Feral, trying to maybe help Glacius, but no, it's very risky. And he'll fall back. Holy crap. This is the hero you try laned against. This silhouette is the hero you wanted to shut down. Now has five out of the seven kills in just nine minutes. This is going absolutely horribly for my revenge. And actually, she's going to get another kill. They just keep go running back and feeding her. Oh my god, that was so damn close. <laughs> but as a result, he's going to have to pop another health potion. They're actually putting more aggression onto her. Here comes Cthulhuphant, though. They might actually finally be able to get a kill mm. onto silhouette. Can't she dodge it? Can't she dodge it? That probably not. Doesn't even have to. <laughs> Well, they don't have to have her dodge it, so Zippa yeah. gets the kill on that, but the damage has already been done. In the meantime, you got Tempest in the top lane pushing that. They have a very early lead coming out for Sangri. Yeah, Pharaoh got Storyfooter, of course, he got occupied to come into the middle right there and trying to assist what ended up being a massive team fight. The only hero not there was Tempest in the end, and he actually just was busy as we saw right there. Uh, push the top tower in, and you know, he's happy with that. So, I mean, sure, you killed Slicks. You actually got a decent bounty for that. What was it? 385 gold for uh, Xibi right there on Cthulhu Fund. Definitely some gold he can use, but you so well put. I mean, the damage has already been done, man. I mean, Slicks, the fact that he's farming nearly 300 gold per minute still, only 14 creep kills as, as your silhouette is, is absolutely ridiculous and just. It can't happen, frankly. I mean, if you're my revenge, you just absolutely cannot let that happen. So they've really put themselves in a very tough spot here because, of course, so Silhouette, not only is she having a great game now, but you also have Tempest and especially Tundra, who's being played by Keizu here, who's at 354 gold per minute himself. He's the top farm of the game. And uh, he's looking very good off to a great start. Fair on the meantime at the top. And look at Slex moving all the way to the top lane. There's that Tempest ultimate holding, uh, holding down Story Footer. And Silhouette will assist for the kill. Swindemelts gets its credit for it. This is what you like about Slicks, man. He's that carry player, but he's uh, he's even at the top lane now, moving around. Yeah, I know. He's a carry player that likes to play very actively, and it's very fun. It's very fun to watch him as a carry player. But yeah, I was going to talk about Little, too. Uh, we haven't had really any time. This has been a very active game, 12 yeah. kills in just 10 minutes. But as you approach the late game, too, not only just for the swap, but the Aurora works so well in, in hand with Silhouette and Relentless Salvo. Which is, like you saw, already doing so much damage. I mean, Silhouette is just a damage dealer without any items. And then you put some, you slap some items on her, like Shield Breaker and things like that. Oh, she is a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very deadly. So, um, yeah, again, it's just Andromeda. All four of his abilities, hers, his, whatever, uh, just really, really scale well into the later game stage, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, just a strong, strong support here on center right now. I mean, he's only level 5, of course, that's expected being the war bitch and everything in the pure support. You're going to be under-leveled, under-farmed, but um, his team is doing great, and that's what matters. 4,000 gold, 3,200 experience advantage right now in favor of the, uh, in favor of State Green here on the Legion side. You see a Luna right here is actually kind of roaming a bit in the jungle as uh, the Aurora comes out from Andromeda. As Ophelia is also continuing to farm. Slicks has kind of been roaming around a little bit. He was farming a little, co couple creeps here in the jungle. I believe the Snotter boss camp. Uh, but now he's joining the bottom line. The Minotaur are actually going to get eaten right there by Cthulhu Fall. But now the Combat's Tongue coming out. He has the hook him activated. So a lot of the minimizing on the damage coming out. As the Luna will fall back. And I believe they will be fine. But some decent counter warding going on here by uh, Stay Green at the same time. So. Back and forth action at the bottom lane. Silhouette is back in. Cthulhu fall with the travel. There's the Pharaoh initiation. And a heal from Ophelia. It's not going to be enough, though. Oh, wow. Silhouette will fall right there. Great attempt. But just not enough. And actually, Andromeda going to get caught. So active play coming out here from My Revenge. Yeah. And they get a couple of kills. The Haste and Moraxis also helping. That's what they need to have happen. They need to roam around here and, ha and use their very strong, tanky, like, mid-game presence that they have. And the Pharaoh is perfect. Like, I mean, you're talking about initiators. Uh, initiators, Pharaoh is the best. You still have a haste room on Maraxis when he's running around trying uh. to spot out Ophelia. He's sitting in this little crevice right here, actually blocking yeah. off the path Very with the bolts. They're going to kill him. They might pursue him. He does actually have a TP. Mm. I'm actually surprised he didn't use that because if they still found him, that might actually might have spotted him right there. No, no it didn't. Or is huh. Maraxis running back in? I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they know something's up, but it's still sitting there. Very, very <laughs> interesting. He will not get spotted for the moment. Portal Key is up on Tundra, by the way. And it looks like Slicks is still going to go for that more of. I want to say that the 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 new Vo build on her, which is this Whispering Helm, and yeah. uh, I can't say I've ever really been a big fan of it, but when you are getting gimped in farm, it is probably the best uh, the best route to go. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, Morax is he's actually still sitting down here. He wants to be a little bit careful. He's going to fall back now, but he has about 1350 gold saved up, so he's on his way to what could possibly be that portal key you like to see. Uh, of course, he has a Steam Boost, Mystic Vestments, Bottle, and even a Mana Battery thrown in there. So yeah, Portal Key would definitely make a lot of sense here for him to have as this next item choice. And something that's really standing out to me too, you know, speaking of Ophelia kind of sitting down there, look at Ophelia. I mean, her farm's not horrible, 225 gold per minute, but she's still level 6, actually. Uh, you compare that to, you know, really everyone else in this game right now, it's, you know, compared to the Hellborn side, not too shabby, but her experience per minute is definitely down there. I mean, he has been trying to be very active and whatnot, but and I'm sure having Cthulhu fun every now and then harass hasn't helped, but... Yeah, Safe Freak hasn't really been able to get the greatest experience this game, but he is going to kind of group up with the team using one of the Vagabonds right there to mana burn more access a little bit. But may set up a push here at the bottom lane, it looks like. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, they have a lot of creeps up onto uh, Ophelia. She is level 7. You have uh, a level 11 Tempest top in the game, actually, as a result of just being able to kind of sit up there on that top lane and push that freely all by himself mm -hmm. while Pharaoh was kind of trying to do some ganking and counter ganking, what have you. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see how this kind of fight goes out. We have a portal key up on Moraxis and just 500 gold. I feel like they really need that. And to be honest, actually, they've actually closed the gap in yeah. gold experience just yeah. a bit. Experience not so much, but gold about another... Uh, it was like 3,000, I think, in favor for the Legion team at one point. Mm, Tempest really wants to get an ulti here. You can tell he's kind of charging in back and forth. But in the end, not able to find it just yet. Tundra Blast going to be used right there. Uh, he's trying, but speaking of Tempest, you mentioned he's level 11, but actually look at his items too. Plated Greaves, Ring of Sorcery. He actually has a Mighty Blade picked up, so he's not even interested in that Portal Key apparently. Oh, the Cthulhu Font's done. Going to miss Tempest right there, hitting the minions though, of course. And uh, the Hellborn team's starting to push out a little bit, but now they quickly fall back as the Aurora comes out from center right there. Uh -huh. And uh, they're going to play safe. And actually, all this going on in the top lane in the meantime, Feral pushing it, but actually he needs to be careful because Tempest, oh, there's that Portal Key from Tundra actually coming out. And Storyfoot is in a lot of trouble now. Tempest with the follow-up. Uh, no ultimate's going to be necessary here. Storyfooter should fall. In fact, there we go. Swinomelon's picking up credit for the kill right there. Yeah, he was simply playing up way too far, way too far. And, uh, I mean, he should have had a good idea that that's what you're going to do. Like, yeah. if, if you can't get that tower fast enough, and you're not pushing that tower very quickly himself as a Pharaoh. I mean, look, he did minimal, minimal damage, so there was really no reason for him to stay up there that long. Ooh, look at that gold color on Roland's name, by the way. It's a special color. <laughs> I wonder if that's for, like, the Hunter admins or something. Could be. Anyways, noticing the small things. Um, yeah, it, you, made, you made a great point, too. It seems like for, for a little bit there, especially when Slick's got the hat trick, I mean, it really seemed like Stingy Green was uh, going to start pulling away here earlier on, but the stats don't say that, really. I mean, if anything, my revenge has kind of closed that a little bit here. I mean, it's now only around a 1,500 gold lead, 3,600 experience. He's still sitting around the same, but here we go. Because the bucket of charge right here. Galatia's coming in and follow Portal Key from Araxis and Keizu will fall right there, completely catching them off guard. Poor coming in. Yeah, that was smart to cancel that because there's <laughs> no way you're going to do anything and probably die, uh, whoever that was. But now this middle tower also going to be pushed in, so great jump right there. And, of course, Maraxis having the portal key. Very, very good news here for my revenge. Yeah, and I believe that port was from Tempest. If you look at both Sender, if you look at uh, Slicks and Ophelia, they all have their ports uh, off cooldown. So I, I believe that was Tempest. You're going to have to concede this middle tower now, which means that the goal is identical right now. Just 185 different, so very, very minuscule. Experience lead, still there. They have a ton of experience dumped up onto this Tempest, who's level 12 now. Yeah. But is it going to matter? If they continue to uh, keep pushing like this as five, keep grouping up, and, and they have a very active team, this Hellborn team. So oh, if yeah. they keep doing this thing of uh, putting pressure on a silhouette, putting pressure onto whoever, um, it'll be more difficult for Silhouette to bounce back and, you know, ultimately get the items that she needs to carry this game. Yeah, and you know, again, that goes back to also the point I was making earlier, where this is a very beefy team over here on the Hellborn side. I mean, Cthulhu Fon, Moraxis, Pharaoh, it, it's going to be difficult to kill them. Now, granted, they don't have that heal power, they don't have, like, a DS or an Ophelia, something like that, uh, to kind of, you know, even make it more difficult, but still, you know, just killing them in general is going to be difficult here, and real, especially going that Whispering Helm route on Slick's playing that Silhouette. I mean, her, her damage out, but it's going to be solid, sure, but it's definitely going to not be maximized in that sense. Uh, we do see in the middle lane a little bit of a push coming out from Stay Green. Cthulhu Font trampling uh, away right there on the minions. And you see, uh, actually, a couple of Vagabonds being controlled by Zephyr. I find that very interesting. It's almost as if he's focusing to get these Vagabonds here uh, for the Mana Bird. Now, actually, with this being a very beefy team, you know, the downside of these strength heroes is that the, their mana pool might not be the greatest. And Moraxis and Pharaoh especially, they can use a decent amount of mana. So having the Vagabonds can kind of make sense there, I guess, mm -hmm. if you're uh, Z Freaks. So I, I do kind of wonder if, they, if he actually is prioritizing those or if they just happen to be picked up. But. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think he's. I, I think if you're Ophelia, you pretty much always always want to have your Skeleton King plus Minotaurs. It's just, it's just the best combination. 
Skeleton King also does go through, it is physical, so if you have any kind of magic immunity, uh, it will go through that as well. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I think that's. I, I think he's just kind of maybe getting unlucky on spawn. I haven't exactly been sure. I haven't really been watching him that much. But they actually are stealing a triple stack mm. ancients right here. Could get dicey here though. They actually Ooh. have the Thunderhawk right over them. Yeah, this is very very dicey indeed. In fact, Andromeda charging it right here. There goes a counter from Raxus. Oh, catching Andromeda. Here's the uh, Arcane Shield going to be activated. Andromeda dropping quickly. Avalanche using the background by Tundra. On to the There's the heal from Ophelia. Going to be fine. Tamas charging in. Will the ulti just yet? No. Hellfire activated by Fair right there. The mommy wall is gone. What the hell are those? A snake wall apparently catching Swinomel. He's going to be fine, though. Cthulhu Pod with the Obliterate activated. The Swap out from Andromeda. The Quick Hop side. There's our Tabas. All the men pulling into Luna. Cthulhu Pod. They'll both fall. And actually, Stay Green will come out on top in the end. The double damage rune was on Moraxis. But now he's in some trouble. He does not have Arcane Shield just yet. Or his ultimate, of course. He has a stomp. Not even going to matter, though. He will fall. And Stay Green comes out big time right there with a four for one exchange. I don't think the Ancients were worth it. Well, I don't think. I don't know why Fuzi playing this Moraxis was so reluctant to. Uh, to Popping his ultimate on the on the Andromeda, waited the whole time. True. Andromeda never died as a result, and actually was able to swap and make some plays because of that. So that was just a horrible decision by not only just a risky decision in fighting right there in that enclosed area on the leading side of the map, but some the you know bad decision making in that team tower. fight. Yeah, those mo those mummy walls really caught me off guard. By the way, <laughs> again, this being an alternate skin, apparently they changed that too. And apparently they're called a snake wall. That was uh, that was something, but. Anyways, yeah, that was, uh, I, I agree with you. Now that you bring up that point, I mean, it makes, yeah, sense. Why didn't he actually activate his ult? He even activated his Arcane Shield right there. I mean, you needed to get that kill. Maybe he just figured Andromeda would just drop so easily without it, but obviously that didn't happen. Yeah. You can't take those risks. you got to be liberal, especially early on in this game, to guarantee those kills. And um, obviously they weren't right there. Now Glacius charging in here, but he just ran right past the Revelation Rune, so uh, 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 Silhouette obviously spotting him. But actually, Ophelia getting caught out by Cthulhu Pot, and Ophelia, well, Team Freak is dead, so. Yeah, it's going to lose his creeps as well. It's kind of unfortunate. But I think a bigger thing, too, is like, you know, they did a lot of damage, or Marax did a lot of initial damage onto Andromeda, blinking in there and stunning, and then using his axes, popping his ultimate. If they pop Andromeda instantly, that's a really horrible feeling as your Legion team, like, oh god, we just started this, this fight, and now we're 4v5 immediately. Like, yeah. we probably shouldn't fight this. And, uh,. Well, with Andromeda living right there, that, that should signal a huge like, turn potential for that Legion side. Mm -hmm. So it, it was just a bad decision. Yeah. Um, now, you got to give credit to My Revenge again. I mean, they're just they're playing very active. They really are. They they're are. Been keeping a lot of momentum up here. I mean, despite the lost fight there at the Ancients, as, as horrific as it was, they came back. I mean, they gained Kazee Freak, and all of a sudden now they're pushing the secondary middle tower in the meantime. Uh, really uh, forcing Stegren. In fact, Marax is jumping in very aggressively. Still not going to cut. There's a Cthulhu. No, the swap from Andromeda, but it's not going to matter. The Obliterate was too much. Andromeda will fall as well. That's exactly what you need again if you're my revenge. <laughs> and now they are going to push the secondary tower. Slicks, can you buy back? Uh, he cannot. So they're, they possibly, in fact, Tempest oh. sticking in there. Swindlemelons, <laughs> what were you thinking, buddy? Oh, and they take advantage of that big tank. I'm not sure what Swindle was thinking. This is how games are thrown. It's just deaths <laughs> one after the other that don't need to happen. First of all, Slicks didn't need to die, even though he died. I would say a good a good swap attempt by Sender. A lot of times I see him actually swap where it's just totally unnecessary and ends up, you know, feeding more than more than not. Yeah. But that was actually a very good swap attempt by Sender. Unfortunately, it didn't work out as they both died. But then that last death by Swindle. I, that was completely, he was standing in a terrible position, he doesn't have a blink or anything like the that, and was just totally caught out of position. There was no reason to try to get an ultimate off with two of your heroes, two of yeah. your big damage dealers, actually, Andromeda. Um, you don't think of her as an, a deal, damage dealer, but having that level 4 Aurora can definitely be a damage dealer with Silhouette. And having those two heroes down, there was no reason to try to pick a fight. Well, I, I do think that was kind of the logic there. I mean, he does have a, he does have his portal key, but he does have a shrunken head. And maybe he figured he could shrunken head right there and get a good catch. But as you said, I mean, especially with Silhouette dead, it's, yeah. it really just, it would have been silly, it seems like, even that. So... Uh, yeah, just not not the greatest position to be in right there. And, well, he takes a death. He get another tower kill. Now, granted, Keizu w was able to do enough at the top lane, actually. And uh, he made sure the secondary tower fell up there while that was going on. So, at least some positive coming out for State Green right there. And, and Keizu, I mean, he's doing his best. To, and he's having a great game. As a swim of so respectfully. I mean, he's sitting around 390 gold per minute himself. But Keizu's at 370. Uh, he actually just picked up his level 1 puzzle box, actually, mm -hmm. uh, to go with his portal key initiation. What do you make of that? Puzzle Block is great. It's pretty pretty good against Moraxis. It's pretty good against Pharaoh as well. Um, and yeah, I think it's a fine pickup. I think it's pretty standard on him as well. I think a lot of things you see with him as well is maybe a Borg. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we'll get a Borg after Puzzle 3. But his items are fine. Yeah. Uh, now for Silhouettes though, I just think she's too too damn squishy. 
Like, this is why I don't like this build. You can farm, 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 and... I, I, like I said, I guess it's good once you're gimped in farm, but you gotta assume that Pharaoh is gonna be getting the health flower, Marax is gonna be getting the health flower. There's no oh, reason yeah. not to get a null stone this game, and it's gonna be too easy to gank her. And this is a hero that's you know shines in the late game, but I don't think is ever gonna make it because she's gonna get picked off so much. Yeah. You do have Andromeda swap, and Tempest has a lot of good farm, but when you make stupid plays like that in the mid, it doesn't matter how much farm you have because they were at a seven thousand, well, eight thousand experience lead, something like. 5,000, 6,000 gold. That has now really come down to almost a close. So, we'll have to wait now, and see. I don't know if we really talked about this either, but what do you make of Swindermon's going for the Shrunken Head rather than a Portal Key choice here? Um, the, the Shrunken Head is simply, I, I think for Portal Key, he just doesn't want to get countered by Pharaoh, Pharaoh specifically. Yeah. But he still can, so I don't know. Yeah, oh, it's picking up. Pharaoh jumps when amounts right there. The Shrunken Head goes up, but the snake wall surrounding him. And the follow up is here? No, actually, I guess not. He is going to be able to fall back. Port's coming in. I thought for sure that was a well, kill, but the Shrunken Head stopped everything, apparently. It's for that exact reason why he has Shrunken Head. Yeah. So if they initiate on him, he can do something like that. And if Pharaoh initiates, that's going to open it up for Tempest to maybe try to get a good hole. Yeah. That's and that, that, that's the main thinking of it. I'm not going to initiate, I'm going to counter initiate, wait for this Pharaoh to do something and then go in. Well, the funny thing, I mean, at the same time, though, now without a shrunken head, I mean, he could be stopped even many more ways. So, And the Feral Ultimate is actually shorter cooldown than the shrunken head. So, Yeah, um, at true. 60 sec or, I guess it's the same right now at 60 seconds. Or No, no it's not. It's it's not, yeah, never mind. Anyways, uh, we do see uh, the uh, the Legion team right here. They are actually uh, going to maybe check out Congor um, because, uh, well, the Hellborn team is absolutely doing Congor, my revenge. Uh, they're going to be tempting Congo currently about half life right here. It's uh, not going to be successful that they will fall back. Another haste, or I thought he had a double damage as well. <laughs> uh, but a haste turn activated here on Moraxis. Thinking about going in. In fact, there we go. He jumps Tundra right here. Where's the follow up? W's activated. Matrix is up. Tundra dropping quickly. Go through the fun, missing oh. the trample completely. And Tundra actually will be fine as Andromeda is there to support as well. In fact, it's coming out with the comma stun. More access still wants blood. Tempest thinking about going back in. He does have an ultimate. He has a Shrunken Head coming up right here. And there we go. But, oh, a great spread from the Hellborn team. Not going to the chance. Or will he's going to come over here? There's the Shrunken Head. No, he's not going to go with the ultimate just yet. Marks to be locked on. There's the ultimate. And Bud Farrell waiting in the background. He comes and cancels it immediately. But the deaths are already adding up here for the Hellborn side. Now they are going to catch Tundra. And actually, Silhouette is already picked off as well. So this could work out very well for my revenge. Now that I look at the big picture, get through the Von Chase and Trample is up. Is he going to use it all as a great line stun? No, he only gets Andromeda. That'll guarantee the kill on her at least. But now Tamp is fighting his ground. So is he freaked. The brothers are standing their ground. They will turn around and get through the fun. But now Swindermon's in trouble. The mummy walls are up or the snake walls again. And actually, the tower did a lot of damage to Story Footer, so he needs to be careful as he is falling back with Aluna. So they're going to spread right here. And uh, they both have Homecoming Stones, I believe. But no, Aluna's going to get picked off. Double tap for Z Freak. Story Footer should be fine, though. Yeah, they lost that exchange. They did use the, the Tempest ultimate right there, but um, definitely uh, staying green coming out on top right there. And every single time that you, you do come out on top a little bit, even if your carry dies because you have a hard, hard carry and the other team doesn't, it, it is a better exchange for you. Yeah. But like I said, right now, actually, I had to tell you the truth, just even right now with the items that Slicks has and being how squishy he is, this Andromeda Aurora plus the, the Relentless Salvo and just the auto attacks for Slicks uh, playing that silhouette does so much damage. I love to see this combination. I really do. I love Andromeda, and I think that she's a support hero that's, quite frankly, not picked up as, as much as she should be. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, she had her time, too. I mean, it's a, I think that was more of the trialing era, especially. She was very, very popular. You know, her and Myrmidon, speaking of another support hero that never gets picked up nowadays, but I think that's more for good reason. Whereas mm -hmm. Andromeda, yeah, I agree with you. I, I still think there's uh, definitely s there's spots for her, and it is a little bit surprising maybe that we don't see her as much. But anyways, uh, yeah, stay green. They came out on top of that fight in the end uh, as slightly as well, like you said, but still the, the fact that they have a silhouette is... <laughs> Had a very Slix is just he really has had an interesting game. I mean, he's had some great moments, but obviously it doesn't seem like he's had the biggest impact in these team fights. You know, obviously he had earlier on he got that hat trick. He had a great start. I think he was five zero and two at a point uh, in the laning phase. But since we've got out in that, it seems like the Hellborn team has been able to lock him down a lot more and really make him struggle. You know, whether that's because of his item build or whatnot, yeah, um, you can decide. But you know, the, another two thousand gold saved up for him. Speaking of silhouette, he so Slix is. Farming. He is doing a lot of damage. He's got 13% on the hero damage chart. And I think that's strictly because, I mean, yeah. even though in fights he gets he dies so easily, I, I think it's strictly because of his damage is enhanced by uh, the Aurora of uh, Andromeda. And now Andromeda is actually not maxing the, the combat afterwards, going the Aurora. Now it looks like maxing Dimensional Link. So 36% mm -hmm. base damage 
on top of all the damage that uh, you know Slicks is pumping out. It's a lot of damage. Oh, this is going to be very hairy right here. Now there is a shiver spotting them doing this Congor, but and actually Aluna's going to snipe it out right there. But they're not going to be able to stop it. Uh, Tempest down. Ultimate, it is not off cooldown yet, and that might have been the big key right there, where they just figured it just wouldn't have been worth it. So Token Alive picked up a Moraxis. He is getting very close to finishing his Hellflower, by the way. And again, that'll be a very, very important item. Speaking of more items, actually, Barb Dahmer picked up on Pharaoh here. As all well, Pharaoh initiates, but he caught the Catman champion. He was going for Z-Freak, of course. But Z-Freak also did a pretty good job of lining up the minions to make it very difficult <laughs> for him. Yeah. And uh, as a result... He's, and he actually denies the tower ID see right there, Story Footer. Compliments him basically on his micro. Yeah, I'm almost wondering if that Congor, like, um, even though it was successful, was what really the best decision. Before they started doing it or started making their way over there, they were at like, I want to say 3,000 and 4,000 experience. 3,000 gold, 4,000 experience. And even after Congor, they've really lost the ex experience department. Look at that, 7,200 now for staying green. So um, Slicks, he's getting more farm. He's getting the items that he's going to need to have. Geometer's Brain probably going to have um, that right now, and then if he gets a Shrunken after that, he is, his items will be core. Yeah. And then it'll be really difficult to take him down, unless, of course, you get a Health Flower, which is in the works for Moraxis, and he should have that quite soon. Yeah, he will, he will be picking that up here, and maybe another Creep Wave or so. Uh, speaking of more pickups, Geometer's Brain on Silhouette, the Portal Key just purchased on Tempest, so... Uh, what is that Puzzle Box guys? Yeah, you'd say that, yeah, level 3, so... Um, well, a lot of important items being picked up all across the board here for both sides, you can say. Safely, in fact, uh, they're going to stack these Ancients over here on the Legion side. And, of course, I uh, go to do this. One of them actually blocking a little bit, but no, they are going to still spawn and be able to clean those up if they so choose to. The Hellborn team, an interesting spread here in the middle lane, actually. They're waiting for maybe to catch somebody pushing up, but doesn't look like that is going to happen. As uh, State Green will fall back and be fine. We got the Portal Key on Cthulhu font with that Soul's Bulwark. So both teams definitely are getting that, that those mid-tier, those really necessary items here early on. And it's uh, going to start. In fact, there we go. The Hellfire just finished officially on Moraxis. So. Uh, but you got to figure, my revenge, they're going to try to keep the activity up here as uh, they are kind of roaming around a little bit, checking out the Ancients, realizing that they were just cleared, seeing that they can catch somebody off to the side here, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's been a pretty fun game to cast so far. 32 kills in 30 minutes, and... In a meta game right now where it seems like it's quite passive, and we yeah. see this lots of passive just AFK farming, I gotta say that I actually really like my revenge. Uh, just in the fact that they have this lineup and they, they're sticking to this kind of grouping up, active pushing or active ganking and all this kind of stuff. And I think the big key thing is, the, well, really Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a very active hero, and you, you see a lot of stuff happen with Pharaoh, a lot of active play. And uh, they have been executing it, but right now it seems. They are losing the battle in, as far as experience goes. Um, Dane Green has a massive experience lead right now. Yeah, you know, my revenge, it is an interesting <coughs> team, because especially before Haunt Tour started, and this is a great thing about Haunt Tour, though. It, we kind of expected this. It would have started to expose more and more teams that we just did, didn't really get the chance to know before because of whether it's just lack of uh, things to, for them to participate in or whatever. But um, I think my revenge is a perfect example of a team that we really knew nothing, absolutely nothing about going into Haunt Tour. And all of a sudden, they're, you know, a pretty, a very solid diamond team. Of course, they competed in the first cycle, and mm -hmm. here they are in the second cycle, fighting strong against a very powerful Staying Green team. So, um, granted, Stay Green is currently in the lead when you look at the stats, but right now, my revenge, they're going to push this top tower here, and uh, they're going to try to make some plays happen that way. Of course, this is the last outer tower remaining uh, for Stay Green, and it looks like they are just going to let it fall. Uh, there's no point to defend it. Going to just farm elsewhere for now, but that will be the final outer tower. The taking care of my revenge, whether or not they push into the base. Again, they still have just over three minutes on that token of life here on Moraxis, so we'll see yeah. if they take advantage of that here. That could be the cue, but you have mid lane pushing, you have your bottom lane pushing. I think it might might even be smarter just, well, I don't know. Like, you do lose this late game against the Silhouette Andromeda and even Tempest. So, yeah, maybe it is the time to push and try to man up and, and, and get, a, get a lucky exchange. And mm -hmm. If they know that Tempest just bought his portal key, and it didn't really farm that much. He doesn't have any buyouts. Slix has no buyouts. If they get a big He's team fight right now, it could totally swing the game. Yeah. So, yeah, I think maybe now is the time to try to do something with that token of life. A shiver coming out. Nice job from Moraxis. So he sniped it. <laughs> there is an interesting ward of sight here that was placed by Znui, actually, uh, right next to this jungle camp here. Um, I believe that spot of the shiver even coming over though, so uh -huh. that's how they were able to see it. But anyways, they are gonna they are gonna make the push now. So kind of like you were saying, it's 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 an interesting decision for my revenge to make. But they are gonna go with the uh, maybe they want to keep the pressure on here. So 
Uh, we'll see. More access. What are we looking at the token of life? Still over two minutes remaining, and he has a Hellflower as well, which he's still yet to use, I believe. So uh, something else to keep in mind. Going to start attacking uphill here, away from the next creep wave. Now, they don't have a barrier idol, and that could obviously uh, hurt them as far as being able to break into the base here. Uh, but the tower, it has taken a good amount of damage already, of course. Down about 423 life, but currently, so we'll so, see if they make it in. I was going to say, something is on the courier, but it's just a ward, so nothing crazy. But, um, you know, the experience is showing 9,100, and I'm looking at the level straight across. It's not like it's that crazy. I think yeah. the biggest thing is actually Keizu. Look, at he's done a lot of counter pushing while you've, while uh, my revenge yeah, has yes. been doing some grouped up pushing. As a result, now Keizu is the top level in the game. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure he does have that puzzle three. Yes, he does. So he's got that to work with. Probably has a buyout after that as well. Yeah. Uh, quick stun used right there by Moraxis to clean up the creep wave, though. But, of course, you know, not the longest cooldown, but you got to be a little bit careful about that. Uh, it's going to be coming off here shortly, though, and uh, we'll see again. But this is some good creep clearing potential here on the Legion side, especially with that Tundra, those piercing shards, the Aurora from Andromeda. There yeah. we go. It's... Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, in this, as you kind of stated earlier, this is a case of my revenge, where you know they, the the time is running out in a sense. You, you can't uh, you can't take forever here. You do not have the late game <laughs> advantage. So yep, um, you gotta you gotta make that move. Uh, whether that is actually just committing to a fight here, maybe falling back and trying to maybe catch them off somewhere. But I think at this point, the smartest route when you see all this counter pushing coming out is you have good wards. Just take out the resources. Take out the yeah. ancients. Wait for next Congor. You're not in a rush by any by that much. Um, you still have a good stance in this game right now. And if you're able to just farm out the map, farm out their resources and their side of the map until the next Congor, you're, I think you're going to be in a better spot. I think they realize that right now. Well, maybe not. Yeah, nope. <laughs> they they want to press this issue, Thought but they're going to be it. fighting without the token in about 19 it's, seconds. It's going to get wasted. Yeah, it's going up very shortly. And actually, there we go. It seems like all right. They say, you know what? We're not going to break it in. Here they go to the jungle. Uh, they are going to clean it up somewhat. I don't know about the Ancients necessarily, but uh, they are going to clean up the jungle a little bit here and to be done with that. So, yeah, not, not <laughs> the most successful push by any means, but at the same time, it did keep Stay Greeno you know, committed to just st sitting in their base, basically, yeah. and uh, keeping the creep base pushed back. So, still in the end, could work out fairly well for my revenge. As they're going to make their way to the bottom lane, it looks like, as well. It did. They're, they're now actually taking the resources, too. Like, SG at this point has nowhere to really farm. They could push out mid, maybe farm their Ancients. That's why I hoped that someone would clear out those Ancients from my revenge. They're, they're clearing out the rest of their jungle. That's good. They're taking bottom lane. They're going to have top lane to farm. They're going to have their own Ancients to farm. So they're going to come back in resources. You see them slowly come back in both Golden Experience. Yeah. Yeah, he talked about that, the Ancients especially, though. But Silhouette is going to be able to go up there. In fact, she stacks them here. Yeah. And she's going to be able to clean up double sacks. So the only miscue, really, for my revenge was the fact that they didn't maybe go for the Ancients. But right. Um, in the end, still, again, working out fairly well right there. But, again, that now really is the case. But it's going to be difficult because State Green, they are sticking together as they really should be somewhat. I mean, they don't they, they know that this Hellborn team, that My Revenge, has a lot of jump-in potential, especially with Team Moraxis, Cthulhu Fun, and, of course, Pharaoh with that Wrath of the Pharaoh. So they do not want to get caught out. Silhouette's actually going to pour bottom lane, and uh, she will farm down here. But we do have initiation in the middle lane. The Glacier down for on top of Tavis. Tavis going to cut out. Tavis will fall right there. <laughs> The Wrath of the Pharaoh even used. Everything was used. But they get the kill, and now Tempus is dead. Does he have a buyback? He does. He does have money for a buyback, so they need to be careful about that, though. They need to be very, very careful. He this is when you anything. see uh, a huge... There's the buyout. They need to know. And that was a oh. bad time to buyout, actually. Oh, there we go. Actually, in case it keeps him in place, I'll let you take over. Yeah, the Tablet Command away, trying to help get through the fun. And actually, there we go. He charges away. I want to say, my revenge, they paid attention to that perfectly. Literally, as soon as he bought out, they turned around. I mean, that well, was very well played. That was a bad buyout timing. There was nothing really happening. It wasn't like they they glyphed. It wasn't that you didn't see my revenge committed. Y mm. You need to buy out when you see them committed. True. They they clearly were not. Um, the creep wave was in a position so that they could walk away and not be like it caught up in creeps or blocked up or anything like that. They didn't have the initiation on before the tempest. You need to initiate before you have a buyout like that, and that was a wasted buyout. Now they know that that's one buyout, and that's also gold wasted for tempest. And uh, really good job by my revenge, but also just a, a very, very bad buyout from Swinomel. Yeah, that's a great point. Didn't even think of it from that perspective, but you're right. I mean, it's they, it, by no means were they committed, and that's what allowed my revenge to have it so easy as far as turning around. You see Ophelia with his minions here at the top lane. He was actually trying to push it in, but the, as a result, they, oh. they are going to get picked off here. Um, so kind of unfortunate. What was that? By the way, look at freaking Glacius' items. <laughs> 
Holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna mention that because I saw Maraxis jump in with the last fight with the health bar. I was like, oh, and the follow up comes up from Glacius. Glacius. Glacius is a portal key pushbook. A tablet. Tablet. A void or, or pushbook. Uh, talent. Uh, void talisman. Crazy, crazy farm on Ar wow. Architect. You're playing this what seems to be a support, but more like semi carry Glacius here in this game. <laughs> And it did work. I mean, if you saw him bleak in there with that ultimate on that Hellflower target of Tempest, oh, it did so yeah. much damage. Yeah, no, I mean, you just never expect that, of course. But yeah. holy crap, Archie Tiger! <laughs> again, it's it's you. You got to also give credit to Znui there. Obviously, he's kind of taking over as more of the bitch support support role. I think it's safe to say he only has a power supply and Strider, so he's kind of just sitting <laughs> back. And he's like, damn it, Glacius, you get all the farm, but no, but hey, Glacius, we never really talk about this because it just never happens. But he can be scary, man, if, especially with the portal key. If he's able to channel off a good duration on his uh, Glacial Downpour, it's level 2 right now, especially if he gets to level 3, man. It can yeah. do some good damage. It really can. So um, that's that, that's real, that's awesome news for my Advantage. On the bottom tower, going to be mass push. They do use Invulnerability. you got to question that a little bit. Um, it just seems like that was really absolutely useless, especially now if they push into the base. Yeah. Uh, they won't have it for there. So kind of a miscue coming out for my Revenge. But stay green, and I don't know if they actually are going to fully push here. seems like they may fall back, so... They're yeah. just going to farm out the resources of the Hellborn team. That's what you have to do. And when you can expect... Oh, here we go! Oh, actually, no. <laughs> False alarm. That was Cthulhu Font jumping in to steal a creep from Ophelia. But, yeah, when you can can expect, like, a team to group up like that and just kind of stay stagnant and, and wait for your push and not try to defend, yeah. take out their resources, because they're probably not farming theirs. A good team will. Like, a good team during that exchange would have understood that we're not being able to defend this. I'm going to farm out my jungle. I'm going to push out lanes and get resources while they're all clumped up as five. Mm -hmm. You see right there, they were only able to kill one of the dragons, so they go ahead and take out the others. And actually, they're going to chase a little bit right here. You see Zeefrik positioning one of the Skeleton Kings in the front lines, um, kind of getting a, some scouting purpose out of it, as it'll be eaten up by Cthulhu Font, activating that uh, Hook'em ability. But by the way, speaking of Cthulhu Font, he has a Demonic Breastplate fully finished, so great news there. Another Hellflower this time picked up on Pharaoh. Awesome there. There's a, there's a couple of items, actually, we really haven't talked too much about, but Shrunken Head on Silhouette now, another 2,500 gold saved up on her. You have another 2,100, 3,300 on Tundra. Jesus. Okay, there's a tablet on Ophelia. Uh, Tundra's 3,400 gold now saved up, though. Uh, so he's saving up pretty big. You mentioned something like a Soul's Bulwark yeah. seems pretty obvious, but yeah. not going for that just yet. Ooh, Moraxis. What was that? He killed the hawk. Shiver, okay. Shiver, yeah. <laughs> so there was a person there, but never mind. But they are going to get Congress, it looks like. Don't see Stay Green stopping this. No, yeah, they're not stopping this. And I gotta say, good job by my revenge actually scouting out any possible wards. They have a bound eye up on Tund or on up on the Maraxis. And they were blinking in this little cliff. They were going up to by the observatory. They were uh, um, Glacius was blinking over to the left Make side. Make sure there's no Franzi wards. Yeah, they they made sure without a shadow of doubt that they were not spotted. They yeah. kill I mean they're really on top of that shiver too. Like they blink, they wanna kill it, they wanna stop all the vision coming out from staying green. And they've succeeded in that regard. Yeah. Now they have the token. They're probably going to push up mid. That tower is very, very low. And uh, with that token of life still up on the Maraxis, they didn't get a chance to use it last time, but maybe they'll use it this time. And like you mentioned, you had Demonic Breastplate up onto Cthulhu Font. Yeah. He is going to be very, very tanky with some good initiation. Looks like we might see a sh shrunken head on Tundra. On Tundra. Yeah. Am I seeing that correctly? He did purchase a Mighty Blade, so. <laughs> huh. So that uh, could be a Brutalizer. I mean, <laughs> could be nice brand, of course, so. Hmm, not okay. going to be obviously a straight up a shrunken head, but it's uh, that kind of leads you in that direction. That's what it's possibly going to be here. I just feel like you jump in, you ult, you have your puzzle box, your minions are there, you shard, and then like this all happens very quickly. By the way, it's not like it's mm -hmm. like this all happens in a matter of seconds. But after that, you, your auto attacks don't really matter. Yeah. So staying in a fight is you don't really have that much sustainability. I feel like in team fights. Well, and even perhaps you, you do with your with your piercing shards. It's not a terrible pickup idea. Yeah, no. But this is one of the few times I, I disagree with Shrunken Head, if that's the route he's going, and he does have it. Yeah, he just right-clicks it right there, so, so it doesn't okay. have a buyback with that Sega Wave to what could be a possible fight. But you know, but it goes back to really the point that, you know, it just seems like a Soul's Bulwark just seems like it almost just makes more sense here. Uh -huh. um, it's, just, it's just an item that your team could really use, and it's more of a supportive item, and so well, why not? But yeah, going the Shrunken Head route, we'll see if that works out for Keizu here. Like I said, there is a possible fight, but again, it seems like we're at a stalemate. Uh, for my revenge and stay green there, and their bottom or the yeah the bottom and top lane are actually being pushed in heavily by a creep wave. So or my revenge will have to keep that in mind, 
And it seems like, again, they are going to choose to fall back early on here. The Ancients, again, they need to put a little bit more priority, I feel like, on the Hellborn An or on the Legion Ancients. They're triple stacked right now. That's a lot of farm to be had. Oh, Avalanche coming out. There's a cold shot to the follow from Tempest on the line. But here comes Brax. There's a great shirt going to end by Tempest right before. So he's going to be fine. Pounding the auto attacks. Matrix activated. But he does have a Hastron on Moraxis. So it looks like he may be fine in the end. Remember, he also has a token of life. He's running the completely opposite direction. Really keeping the Stigrin occupied. And actually will portal key away and be fine. I. Okay, so we just had mass initiation right there and nobody yeah. died. Well, that was really smart by my revenge. I think they spotted it out. But there was a double damage rune up. And it was cutting through Maraxis, absolutely destroying him. And yeah. they realized, oh my god, this is not the fight we want to fight. And also Maraxis, on top of that, jumped in onto a shrunken head target of Tempest and didn't get it, wasn't able to get anything. Yeah. So um, that was a smart retreat there from my revenge. Yeah. It's just, it's, it is kind of funny, you know, seeing some both teams initiating like they did and have zero kills come of it. But you're right, I mean, in the end, it's just, sometimes you gotta, you got to be the bigger man in retreat, you know. And uh, my revenge, they... They smartly did right there. So that double damage ring, of course, warring off by now. Speaking of Silhouette, she does have 4,400 more gold saved up. So this looks uh, going big right here. It seems like uh, the next item in line, probably, honestly, a Savage Mace here. That uh, seems like the, the go-to choice uh, for really just most, especially range carries at this point. Um, sell that power supply and pick that up. But we'll see. Uh, Blessed Ore picked up by Cthulhuon, actually. So that could possibly turn into something like a sheep stick here. Could be pretty cool to see. Um, Frost, no, Playmail picked up a more axis actually. It was probably gonna be a Frostfield plate eventually. Yeah. Playmail, you know, nothing wrong with that. Actually, Ophelia's in a little bit of trouble. Tundra jumps in. Ophelia's in a lot of trouble, though. Hellfire's gonna be applied. There's the Quake's done. And Ophelia will be picked off. Look at the back of the Cthulhu being locked up by Tundra. But Cthulhu Fawn is so damn tanky. Activates Hookum. Tempest jumps in. But nothing that he's going to be able to do. Cthulhu Fawn just kiting away. Feral's waiting for the right opportunity. As is Tempest. There jumps in for Maraxis. And Dramata's going to fall right there. Boy, Talisman activated by Glacius. The Glacial down boy. But now Silhouette pounding in the auto attacks. Getting caught out though. Feral off to the side. But now Silhouette realizing, oh, she ports out actually. Ooh, where did Feral go? Okay, no, he didn't hook anybody. He went for the attempt. Non successful though. And that's an illusion, I believe. Yeah, okay. This so the Silhouette illusion dies. This Cthulhu Fawn is so damn tanky. Yeah. Like, you had the old, you had Kazer just pounding on him with his minions and everything for a good like five seconds, and like no damage was dealt to him. Well, and the, then on top he of that, they hooked him activated too. I mean, yeah. well, no, no, this is before. Oh, this before? is before he uh, he actually ate his creep. Yeah. By the way, he should be eating the purple creep. This is just a minor criticism there. Um, the, he already activated the mana burn ability from the other creep. Mm -hmm. Having that purple creep is just much better. Actually, more initiate on the Tempest. What are you doing? He sits up there. He's health out. He might be in a lot of trouble. Swindle yeah. will go down. He does have one more buyout. Will he buy out? Yes, he will. My Revenge needs to spot that out. The glyph was used. That is not a good glyph because that signals uh, My Revenge to go back. They actually snipe out a kill. Slicks onto Fuzi there. Uh, well, actually, he was still in the base, but the glyph should not have been used there if you're using a buyout. You want to bait them into staying there. So having that glyph is big, gives a big signal to My Revenge of we need to back up what's going on. Oh, they used a buyout on Tempest. Get yeah. back. So they should have just let that tower fall and not use that glyph there, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, you know, I, I could have seen My Revenge trying to fire right there because, again, Token of Life was obviously on Moraxis, so he died the first time in kind of behind the tower, but they could have, you know, if anything, tried to save him. That could have been a clutch Tempest ultimate chance. But yeah. um, in the end, you know, it's still obviously stay green. They still are in the better spot. Moraxis is dead. No, he does have a buyback, 2,500 gold. Uh, so if he dead. finds it necessary, as actually... Oh yeah, the Legion Curry was killed. I, I don't know. If, I don't think anything was on it necessarily. Uh, that's not the biggest deal. Look at the bottom lane. By the meantime, by the way, <laughs> a lot of this group of bunch of actually initiation happening on a Tundra right there. Silhouette also getting caught on Tundra. Gonna activate the Shrunken Head. Moraxis jumping in. Silhouette pounding in some auto attacks right here with that tree grapple. Matrix activated from Moraxis. He's gonna fall back. Look at Cthulhu Pun again, especially with the hook him up. He is just so damn tanky. And we're having a lot of cases of both teams kind of just falling back and retreating here because they're about the trample just missing. That is an illusion silhouette, so it's going <laughs> to fall. Uh, I don't think they realize that. Tab is all the way in the background, actually catching Aluna right there and Pharaoh. Big catches, but not much follow up damage. Swap onto. Oh, the comma stun hits the W from Araxis, and oh that'll allow him to jet on out of there. Void Talisman activated by Glacius, and he'll portal key away, and Glacius will be fine. <laughs> now they do get the middle tower, and so far Cthulhu Font is the only one dead. After all of that, does uh, you have a buyback? No, he does not. This could be a big push from Stay Green. I mean, this is just the simple part of the game where you have the, like I said, the Aurora maxed out, the uh, the Dimensional Link maxed out from Andromeda, and you have huge damage items coming out from Slicks. So you need to start focusing Slicks. Like, well, there's two things now, of course. You focus that Tempest. You know he doesn't have a buyout, so you kill him. Is guaranteed 4v5. But now with Slicks having all this damage and then the swap on top of that, that makes it a little bit more difficult. 
Um, and she is, she's cutting through these people quite nicely yeah. in these team fights. Oh, yeah, the Savage Mesa, as they say. It seems like the obvious follow-up, and sure enough, he went that. And yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it's doing its work, no doubt. So um, it's, it does it, – for the first time in this game, I'm actually I, – I, I do feel now that State Green actually is in a very comfortable spot here. Um, now, not too comfortable by any means. The game isn't over at that point just yet, but uh, they, they are in the comfortable spot. And at this point, you know, it's, it is by all means an uphill battle for my revenge. Now, another Congor kill could be very useful for them, and you do kind of see them in that area. I'm not exactly sure how much time is left on Congor. It's got to be up very shortly, though, I would think. Um, I don't know, actually, how much time was on the token of life when he died with it, so maybe not. But anyways, we'll see that comes up shortly. It seems like that they are wanting to at least uh, have that idea. But uh, obviously not being up just yet. Won't be able to do it. Now he will be dropping bananas this time. Another big thing to remember as well. So, But for now, Legion team, they've fallen back. They're just continuing to farm. Another 1,900 gold saved up on Silva. The buyback situation, by the way, Swindle Miles is completely out of buybacks, whereas Fuzi playing that Moraxis, he's only used the one. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, everyone else has their two. So, I want to say that these Ancients have been triple stacked for a while now. And that's a lot of gold. They're all three Predestar Crushers. And, uh, or Predestars and what have you. And that's a lot of farm. But uh, at, at this rate, it looks like Stay Green is just going to be able to out-farm. But no, they're, they're kind of still grouped up in their base. They're very, very scared of the very aggressive nature mm -hmm. of uh, My Revenge. And they have been aggressive between these Pharaoh Hooks. He has another 3,400 gold saved up, by the way. And like you mentioned, the Frothfield pick probably in the works from Raxus. Will get slowed down just a bit because of that buyout there. Yeah. But they're going to have to make a decision here because this top lane is getting pushed up pretty aggressively. You know the Pharaoh Rocket's actually sniping out any kind of potential push. So good job from Stroyfutter right there. Soul's Bulwark eventually picked up by Tundra, by the way. So not going to before the Shrunken but he does get in. Here we go. Actually, triple stack Ancients yeah. are going to be picked off. So finally we see uh, My Revenge actually coming over here. And they are going to take advantage. So very smart on their part. Now we'll want to fall back very shortly here because Legion team is pushing up. In fact, yeah, he's going to leave the one Predestar Crusher back. Uh, just as kind of a tease right there, but Tundra will pour in and realize that, well, crap, our triple stack just got stolen. The Hellborn team, ooh, they want to jump in. Moraxis, he's thinking about it, but no, the Legion side going to be fine. Silhouette trying to bait something, as you can see with the illusion. But yeah, my revenge. They're not going to fall for it, at least just yet. But yeah, the triple stack ancient kill, that's, you know, again, they, you mentioned Stay Green, they're kind of sitting back, and this could focus you more just on going to start farming ahead now. It's only a 4,200 gold lead. I mean, it's it's not taking off by any means. We're 15 minutes into this game. It, it still seems like my revenge is able to hold their own. And uh, State Green, if anyone's, they're, they they're, they continue to be the ones on their heels. I mean, mm -hmm. they're the ones continuing to play very passive here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and this is good by my revenge. If they're able to continue doing this and to farm out the resources at the same time, forcing uh, State Green to only farm out and put, counter push the mid lane, then they're going to start coming back in golden experience. They are at a deficit right now. 4,000 gold, 6,200 experience, but um, they're playing this quite nicely. I mean, both teams really are. Yeah. So right now, State Green again, just going to hold their ground. And obviously, with the Ancients sort of being cleared out, just respawning right there. But the Congor is up. There's no vision here for State Green right now. Obviously, you may expect something, but there is no vision. So they can never, they can't be too certain in exactly how much life he has. Um, and also, this is the third Congo kill. So, Bananas will be dropping as well. Now, State Green, they are heading over. They know something's up, of course. Uh, they're kind of heading over that direction. Now, it's once again great warding here by the Hellboy team. In fact, more axes. He's ready to jump in. Will he jump in? Will he jump in? Oh, he snipes the Hawk right there. Obviously, uh, Tundra in the front lines. Congo not being attempted anymore. After the Hawk comes up, will jump in right there. Catches Silhouette. And Silhouette's dropping. There's a swap out from Andromeda, though. And the Legion team might in a much better spot. In the meantime, Tundra in the background. Cthulhu Ball will get torn apart, though by Silhouette, and he will fall. More actually jumps back in, but that's an illusion right there. And it looks like My Revenge, they're starting to fall apart a little bit. More Axis, he's going to get caught. He'll get bursted down. Cthulhu Funk cannot buy back. More Axis can, yeah, uh, but it's, it's his remaining. In fact, there we go. He buys back, but now State Green's in a very good spot here. That was very poorly played by Fuzi. Um, first of all, he had a Tundra sitting right there stunned for two seconds right in front of him, totally segregated from the rest of his team. Could have just picked him off. The Hellflower came very, very late. I don't even know if it was from him or from Pharaoh. Probably from Pharaoh because it seemed like Fusi just was not reacting at all to this Tundra, which was basically a free kill. Yeah. And then after that, just totally, 100% suicided himself. Like, yeah. for absolutely no reason. And then buys out on top of that. So, yeah. 
Yeah, that was a huge turn of events there for State Green. On top of that, they get the, they get the tease. And, sorry, and I totally. believe that's the illusion once again. Uh, is that? No, that is the real silhouette, actually. <laughs> was the real silhouette, but the team support was there. You see the ice armor being spread around from the ice circle, being controlled by Zephyr, of course. Uh, Tundra jumps in. A Feral falls back. They'll go through the fonts up in about 10 seconds here. So, again, game's not over yet. You do see how the bottom lane, again, being pushed in pretty heavily in favor of uh, in favor of my revenge. And, actually, that will get the Legion team to retreat. In fact, the top lane also doing the same. So, State Green, they decide it's best to just fall back as they, they are obviously not in the necessary biggest rush here. Uh, to finish this game, especially with their lineup. So, yeah, after that fight, though, now the Golden Experience lead are starting to get a lot better. It's now a 9,300 goal lead and a 15,000 experience lead here. Symbol of Rage just picked up by Silhouette. He's hitting pretty hard right now. That'll be huge, of course, for survivability. Yeah. And on top of that, he has a token of life. So that, that could be the item that just really does it in now. Token up on him. Bananas up on Tempest. I will say the one saving grace, the one saving grace <laughs> that... My revenge has is the fact that Tempest has no buyouts, and if yeah. they're able to capitalize and get a kill on him very, very fast, reset the fight, then push up, that's their one opening back into this fight. Um, I am actually a little surprised that they didn't put the token of life up on the Tempest for that reason. Obviously, if you initiate on him, he cannot use those bananas because if you're health you can't use anything at all. Mm -hmm. So I, I think token should have gone maybe perhaps to Tempest, and then maybe bananas on the silhouette. But yeah, that's the one opening they have is getting a kill on this Tempest. True. And again, it's no surprise to see them what they're doing right here. I mean, they're just trying to keep the lanes pushed up, and they will more than likely eventually, you know, try to just push into the base here because really their options are running very, very low right now. And exactly how much longer they can lash in this game. The silhouette, she's already getting absurd. I mean, you got the Tempest, and as you said, it's yes, uh, if you do manage to pick them off, having the no buybacks will be huge, but you got to get them to that point first. And then, of course, there's Tundra who's uh, constantly been having a big impact, and... Uh, We'll be having more and more as this game progresses. So, and actually, State Green, they're going to be the ones to be the aggressors here. They say, you know what, why, why wait? They're just going to go ahead and push up the middle lane themselves right here. And they're not going to force my revenge to play on the uh, passive side, mm -hmm. especially since they have the token alive. So, Well, they have a silhouette that's totally, like, just massively huge. Yeah. Can hit that those towers from the, uh, from the low ground as well, having that, the... Savage Mace, and it's going to be so easy for them to push. Look at that. Still have a token of life on them. I think they can easily take a fight here. They're so much stronger than the Hellboard team. Good for the fun. Uh, attempting to finish his post haste here. He just actually sold his original boots and bought the Strider, so wanted to pick up the post haste. Of course, in a game like this, uh, that's uh, you know exactly what you expect to go for. Actually, struck it out activated mm. right there by Silhouette, so Six is just, uh, he's tired of waiting. He's just going to stand his ground here and go for the melee racks. Um, he's even splits up, so he's going balls to the wall. Mirax in the background, though, jumps on a Tundra, actually. Tempest coming in. There's a swap from Andromeda. Tempest with that. Shogun. Tundra will fall. So already a pick happening for the Hellboard team. The melee Rax does go down. Cthulhu Boss still up there. And actually, uh, nope, that's uh, that's it. Actually, Tundra does buy back, by the way. And he is making his way back towards the fight. So uh, we'll see if he's able to get there in time. And nope, that's Silhouette. Okay, there's the Quakes done. Not really a whole lot of follow-up, though. And she just still stands her ground. And... He's going to be fine. Glacius now coming in with a freeze barrel. He's going to wrap the frog. Gets a good mommy wall up. But where's the follow up for him? There's a tablet out. Cut through the pot. Jumps in. They do get the pick. Onto and drop. But there's a Tempest ultimate coming out. It is going to be canceled, however. But cut through the pot and Pharaoh will fall. And I think this is just going to be too much. Silhouette going down. But of course, going to resurrect right here. And the damage is going to start adding up. Morax is trying to fall back. Pharaoh buying back. Uh, holding his own. Mummy walls go up. And now he's being trapped in a little bit of great red stun, actually. But, uh, again, it's just not going to be enough, it seems like. Steve Green, they wanted to be a little bit careful here not to get too extended, but uh, the damage has already been done, definitely. Yeah, I mean, Silhouette is just does too much damage at this point and has enough team support, has the Andromeda behind her if she needs it, has Drunken Head, has Geometer's Bane, has Symbol of Rage right there, full HP yet again. It's just too much, too many items. It went to the late game in 60 minutes, to basically, and Silhouette will just out-carry you with Andromeda and with the yeah. rest of the team backing her up. Double heat, or the heal coming out from Ophelia as well. Um, it's just too much for, for my revenge. So they, they did really well. Yeah. They did a really good job um, in the early to mid game. Very aggressive team. They played it well, but it just simply got too late. Yeah, it, it really did. And so for my revenge, it seems like it is going to be coming in here shortly. Now, uh, obviously, it is their choice in the end where they wanted to, to maybe move on to the next game. And it looks like right now they are still going to at least fight it out and uh, give that one last hope, perhaps that just lucky catch, because like you kept, like you were going back to him, and if they happen to catch Tempest now, granted right now with his ultimate being down, it doesn't really matter too much, but um, still has another 4,000 gold saved up. I mean, she obviously still has her both of her buybacks to use, but I could see her just purchasing, I mean, she has an open item slot at the same time, so 
I guess here just even getting bigger here, honestly. Not really worrying too much about needing to use a buyback necessarily. But we'll see which route Slicks decides to go. Probably the safer route of just pooling up that gold for now. And yeah, he just buys a homecoming stone. But my revenge, again, you know, they got to take some, some type of risk here. Whether it's just group up and just mass push. I mean, right now it just seems like they're going to just pushing out the lanes and going to farm a little bit. And I just don't know if that's, you know, it's, it's just not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, I, it just, yeah, simple put, it just got too late, and Silhouette got a lot of good items. I will say that this build does work, I mean, pretty much, honestly, any build works with Andromeda on your team. Like I said, the very start of this game, I really think Andromeda was the thing that stuck this whole team together. I really do. And uh, Sender's been playing pretty well this game as their stand-in, uh, replacing Skies out for this match. And I just think Andromeda has a very, very strong place in the metagame, and more teams need to be picking him up. Yeah. Um, oh. it, it just changes the way you fight in team fights because you think go on silhouette, burst them down, and that that seems to be like the idea for most teams. You mm. burst someone down, but you can't do that with Andromeda on the team. You it's like a free can't. storm spirit, really. It's I mean, better than a storm it's spirit. It's better, yeah, because you you're from very long range away. Yeah. Yep. Uh, obviously, we see right here the Hellborn team. They're maybe trying to get that lucky catch, but it's it's not going to happen again. They're just grouped up. That's uh, that is a real silhouette, but he's split up right there. As it is a quick set, look at Aluna dropping so quickly. Now, through the ball, we'll get a good line stop. But Tundra jumps in the avalanche. Honor Morax is right there. The Mandalorax is dead. He's going to be tapping away, but the damage is just adding up as expected. And the Hellborn team is in complete retreat mode here, and you're just not going to win a game if that's going to be the case. So they're going to lose both of the racks and now stay green uh, while they just fall back and again just play it safe. Or it looks like they're going to just kind of fall back for now. And uh, not really force anything. Moraxis will jump in, actually catching Tundra right there. They make it a little bit of a pick. Uh, as we fair on the background, he jumps in, gets a great mummy wall up. But Tundra tanking all this damage. He's going to be swapped out. And Swinomus picks up a kill on a fair in the meantime. And now they still want to kill this Tundra. They are going to get Andromeda. They make it. No, the Tempest Ultimate coming in. Moraxis jumps in, gets a kill on a Tundra. But the full duration Tempest Ultimate are near it. Uh, he gets it off. Silhouette now joins the party. And again, the damage is just going to be too intense. Feral uses Look at that. his last buyback. Yeah, that's, it wasn't clear already. You just see right there. Perfect example. There we go. GG, well played. are going to be called. And it looks like uh, Stay Green, they'll take the first game here. Of course, it is a best out of three. So my revenge, and they clearly proved in that first game. And they can definitely hang with these guys for sure. But in the end, it just, it just got too overwhelming for uh, my revenge. But you got to give the credit for Stay Green at the same time. I mean, they played it, they played it well enough. And uh, they were able to hold out to that late game stage. Yeah. Obviously come through with a victory. So They tried something different, too. And this is a, a yeah. different strategy. They, they actually were crumbling in the early game. And so you got to give them props for coming back. Like, early game, they were feeding Silhouette the kills. And they were trialing it against her in a lane that was very, very good against an Ophelia gank. Yeah. And, you know, being both Cthulhu Font and Glacius in that lane. Yeah. And they died. Silhouette wasn't really getting farmed as far as creep kills, but was getting farmed as far as hero kills. And had three early, uh, well, actually five early hero kills that game. And uh, as true, a result, yeah. kind of snowballed her uh, after that. It was a very back-and-forth game, to say the least. It was fun to watch. I'll, I'll give you that much. And actually, both of these two teams, they do like to play somewhat aggressive. And I will say this game was definitely won by the supporting, the supporting cast plus Slicks. Um, Center did a great job warding, swapping out when he needed to. Uh, Z-Freak played fantastic Ophelia. Yeah. And Slicks ultimately did win in the late game as it got to the late game. Yeah. Well... Kind of a recap right there, of in case you were cheating in late, but yeah, that's kind of just, uh, <laughs> Shoff just so well explained it. Uh, that's pretty much how it happened. So about an hour game there, but it does go for staying green. And, well, that's just game number one, though. So we got a best of the three here, and we'll be jumping into game number two after a short little break right here. So we'll see if My Revenge is able to force that third game or if Stay Green will sweep the series and move on here in the next round of the Diamond Division cycle number two. So, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. I'm Breaking CBK, joined by Trial Fandor. Game number two coming up very shortly here. Stick around. Yeah.